Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 5 starts now. After months of intense and emotional debate, it is now official. The City Council has approved funding to expand the shot spotter system. Glad you're with us tonight at 5. The gunshot detection system will now expand to neighborhoods across the city. That's right. So here are some of the broad strokes. Council approved the funding by a vote of 5 to 4. The $7 million contract will be paid with money from the police budget, not COVID relief money. That comes as people say there are privacy concerns with the listening devices. Sean Light is live on this story for us tonight, Sean. Uh, the debate over this really dragged on for, for hours today, Sean. Truly did. We were there for all of it. Now we're here on Detroit's west side, really to make this point that the bottom line is shot spotter is likely coming to your neighborhood if you're in the city. Now expanded to 10 different neighborhoods. You mentioned the vote razor thin five to four and then five hours of debate. The shot spotter sensors pick up the exact location of gunfire. The shot spotter debate again is picking up steam outside of City Hall, a protest against surveillance is not safety. We have drones in this city. We have surveillance helicopters in this city. We have Project Greenlight in this city. Inside City Hall, Tamara Smith telling council why she is for Shot Spotter. Shot Spotter is very valuable in our city because it saves lives. Smith lives on Detroit's west side. She has six kids. She feels so strongly about adding Shot Spotter to neighborhoods. Today, she drove downtown to tell council. And the safety in my community is what's extremely important to me. Living in an area where you can wake up and feel safe and know that you won't walk out of the door and a possibility be shot and know that if a shot does go off that you will have offers to show up because they exactly know where it's detected is extremely important to me. City Council changing the shot spotter three year contract to not use $7 million in federal funds. Many argue to use that money for other city issues. Now the city would pay for shot spotter from the general fund. Finally, a vote five to four shot spotter approved. I hope that the energy continues um, because we have a lot of work to do around gun violence in Detroit. It does not stop with shot spotter. So a lot of pressure on city council here and what they did was what you had mentioned transfer uh, the payment here to the police budget. They want this, so it's going to come out of their budget. They'll have to make room for that. Same time, it's called American Rescue Act federal funds that came to Detroit. Seven million dollars left there. People who did not want shot spotter now would like to see that money used in other ways, particularly in mental health. Bottom line, it's coming. We just asked police, when is it going to be in those 10 neighborhoods? They say by July 4th. Back to you. Sean, tell us one more thing. So the chief uh, was asked what he would do if this didn't reduce shootings in the city. What do you have to say about that? It was a direct question. He had a direct answer. He says it's working now in two precincts. The numbers back it up. He says if the numbers don't back it up after this contract, the contract is three years. He says he knows council will not renew the contract. Mm -hmm. We'll be watching it. Okay, Sean, thanks. Romeo Plank is closed at 26 Mile Road in Ray Township tonight as police investigate a bad crash. Uh, two people injured in this crash involving a truck and a car and power crews are there on the scene, as you can see, because the crash wiped out a power pole. Uh, we await word on the extent of the injury, so we will update you just as soon as we know more. The family of a woman killed this morning by a hit and run driver is speaking out amid their shocking loss. This happened around 730 this morning near Chalmers and Houston Whittier on Detroit's east side and the driver still on the loose. Jacqueline Francis live on this story and let's start off with the uh, an update on the investigation. Jacqueline. Now, Devin and Kimberly, Detroit police are doing their best, but right now there are no new leads in this investigation, and there was very little information to go off of in the first place. Take a look around. This is the intersection where it happened, Rochelle and Chalmers. There's not a lot around here. That business is vacant. No houses on these corners, no doorbell cameras, nothing like that. But what we do know is that that driver is still out there, and the victim's family is devastated. Identical twins Octavia and Latavia Johnson just celebrated their 26th birthday. My heart, my other half, my everything. The party decorations still hanging when Latavia got the call. Somebody she was staying with called and told me that your sister just got killed. Octavia was killed in a hit and run around 7.30 Tuesday morning on Detroit's east side. Her sister says she was likely walking to the store, passing through the intersection of Rochelle and Chalmers. Six months pregnant, Latavia says the pain is more than she can bear. I know the baby feels what I feel and I can't, 
really express what I truly feel, which is to scream and cry and everything. It hurts. It hurts. Only made worse knowing her sister won't be there when her baby is born or by her side as maid of honor at her wedding. But most excruciating is knowing the driver is still out there. Detroit police have little to go on. And whoever did it, I just want them to acknowledge they did it and to come forward. They, we're going to find you. Some, they're going to find them. So there's no use in running. There's no use in hiding from the truth. We have to deal with her not being here anymore. So I feel like it's only fair that the person that did it deals with the consequences of the action. If you saw or heard anything involving this hit and run again, we are at Rochelle in Chalmers on Detroit's east side. The family is begging for you to come forward. You can also submit tips to police anonymously. Reporting live, I'm Jacqueline Francis, Local 4. Just heartbreaking. All right, Jacqueline. The parents of the suspected Oxford High School shooter appealing to the state Supreme Court today. Jennifer and James Crumbly are trying to get their involuntary manslaughter charges dismissed. They claim prosecutors cannot legally draw a connection between the parents and the charges against them. In filings, the Crumbly's claim prosecutor Karen McDonald is making prejudicial comments about them and dragging the case out. We've reached out to the prosecutor's office for a response to the filings, but we have yet to hear back. Well, let's turn our attention to the weather, a live look at uh, how things look right now in Ann Arbor this afternoon. You can see getting a little cloudy, changes yeah, coming, uh, right. in fact, rain coming our way in the next few hours. Let's get over to Kim Adams. We're also losing a little bit of sunshine, too, as the days go on, Kim. No, we are. We're losing our sunshine and also our warm temperatures after tomorrow. But right now, it's still nice outside. You have at least, I'd say, two or three hours to get outside and enjoy this weather. If you're on the east side, you might even have four or five. As temperatures drop down into the 60s at midnight tonight, we will see rain move in sometime after 8 o'clock. Here's where it is right now. We've seen those clouds continue to increase here in southeast lower Michigan, but the rain is just now headed into southwest lower Michigan out of northern Indiana. It's pouring down rain right now in Chicago, and all of that is headed here to Metro Detroit. So at the bus stop tomorrow morning could be some scattered showers. We will get a break from the the rain through much of the day tomorrow and then a few more showers at three o'clock. The heaviest rain arrives tomorrow night and also some very high winds. We'll talk about that in the forecast in just a few minutes. Kim, thank you. Actress Angela Lansbury has died. The actress uh, was an award winning person, was best known for a role as Jessica Fletcher on the hit series Murder, She Wrote. She was also nominated for an Oscar when she was just 20 years old. Angela Lansbury dead at 96. All right, let's turn to the new coronavirus numbers for the week. It's Tuesday. The numbers just released. The state reporting 12,548 new cases over the past seven days. Uh, that averages out to 1,700 cases a day. These, of course, are the official ones, those that are reported rather than people just testing at home. Keep that in mind. But 152 new deaths being reported over the same time period. So right now averaging a little over 20 COVID deaths a day in Michigan. Uh, shots fired on the Lodge Freeway before the morning rush today. Police say the victim side swiped a car that was blocking traffic from a crash in the northbound lanes near Wyoming. When the victim got out to make sure everyone was OK, the victim and suspect got into a fight. Police say the suspect fired two shots. Nobody was hurt. Part of the freeway, though, was shut down twice this morning for police to investigate. Meanwhile, police are also investigating after a man is shot in his car in Detroit's east side. Police say he was in a Dodge Charger on Orleans near 8 Mile and DeQuinder when someone opened fire. The victim was taken to the hospital in critical condition. Police are still investigating. President Biden met virtually with the G7 leaders today after another night of deadly Russian attacks throughout Ukraine. Ukraine's president is renewing his plea for increased military assistance. That, as we learned, more than a dozen U.S. air travel websites were shut down on Monday morning by a group of pro-Russian hackers. Alice Barr with the latest from Washington. Alice. Good evening. Ukraine is once again pleading for help stopping Russian attacks from the skies. And President Biden and key allies are promising to supply more air defense systems. 
A close call and a look of terror as this young Ukrainian narrowly avoided an explosion, demonstrating the fresh fears, with Russian missiles once again raining down on city centers across the country as the civilian death toll mounts. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky pleading with President Biden and leaders of the G7 nations for more advanced air defense systems, telling the world leaders, quote, this is an enemy not only of Ukraine, it is the enemy of each of you. President Biden pledging his unwavering commitment to hold Russia accountable and support Ukraine for as long as it takes. Russian President Vladimir Putin calling the new round of deadly missile strikes retaliation for the blast that damaged a prized bridge connecting Russia to Crimea. Ukrainians undeterred. We will be standing up against the tyranny and uh, uh, whatever happens, whatever Putin's attempts are to break us, he will fail. Putin has been under mounting pressure amid setbacks on the battlefield and pushback against his draft, forcing some Russians to fight. He's desperate because he made miscalculations. Closer to home, more than a dozen U.S. air travel websites were shut down yesterday by a group of pro-Russian hackers. There's no indication any airport operations were affected, but the hack renews concerns of Russian cyber warfare. Cybersecurity officials promising the U.S. is ready to respond as the world weighs its response to escalating Russian aggression. Also today, President Putin meeting with the head of the United Nations nuclear watchdog that's been trying to negotiate a demilitarized zone around a nuclear power plant that's come under attack in Ukraine. In Washington, Alice Barr, Local 4. All right, Alice, just getting started on a busy Tuesday. Yeah, let's check in with Paula Tuck.